of the things an average person would expect from you is that you are loved by the audience, right? And I was thinking, who are the set of people in the world that everybody loves in any part of the world? And boom, just like a miracle, he came to me, babies. And I said, Joseph, this morning, you should be like a baby. And I was like, okay, that's cool. And while I was thinking, it also came to me, and I was of the opinion that I think, since everybody loves babies, I think babies should be role models of the world. Babies should lead the world. Imagine if we had the baby as a president. Trust me. Don't shout yet. Think about it, okay? Trust me. We will not be where we are today. And I'll tell you why, right? Because even our parents, our elders, they also do the same thing, which we'll get to as I go. And I'll tell you why. Now, when a child is born, the child does not know right or wrong. The child does not know male or female. Per se, you could just be like that. It doesn't know. It just knows that, oh, these people love me. This woman feeds me. This man plays with me. And the other ones that are not the man and the woman, which later on they'll find out are their siblings, they are my slaves till I get to a matured age. So I will use them while I can. And why are babies important to us? Why? The topic of my speech today is learning from babies. And I'll, why, why, why this topic? I came to discover in my whole journey in the university, right, from my 200 level to now, I came to discover that our learning system is flawed in entirety as a nation, as a generation. In fact, especially as a generation. So the problem with it is that we are too smart. So each and every one of us here, we are too smart. We don't want to learn. We're too proud to ask to know more. So if I'm the team leader, I'm like, you know, the old team leader is gone. This is my time. I must do my thing. But that's not the way it works, right? That is definitely not the way it works. Um, the best inventors in society have invented, invented things and discovered things in the most mediocre of ways. The law of gravity. An apple fell down from a tree and the guy was like, what? And then he said, oh, when this, 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 this is the law of gravity and we all come to school and we learn it. When babies are born, they don't know how to speak, they don't know how to walk, they don't know anything, right? And then you see them trying, right? They don't care how many times, when the baby wants to walk, he doesn't care how many times he falls down. What he knows is that, you see that thing that man is doing, that man is doing, me too, I must do it. And the day the baby begins to walk, the next goal is that I will run faster than this man. So when you come home, you always find your babies, you know what, running towards you. And even if they fall, they get up and they continue, right? So for me, the best set of innovators and world changers are babies. When a baby comes, even though the woman goes through immense pain, the joy the baby brings to the home is indescribable. In fact, if the husband brings in 10 million that day, the joy is still not going to be as much as giving birth to a child. Babies are the world leaders. Don't doubt me on that. If you think I'm joking, get one, right? So why do we need to learn from babies? Now, in our society today, we find a lot of restrictions, a lot of bias, you know, as it is now, you, there, funny enough, you know, there's now a definition for women and men. So you have opposing ideas of feminism and masculinity. And anytime I see that on social media, which is the new community, I'm like, are you serious? I just came into this world to come, make money, impact the world, and die. Why should I be arguing how manly I am or how womanly you are, right? The baby knows that the mother is meant to feed, so he's never going to suck the breast of the father. He knows who the father is. I know your role in my life. You have to play with me. That's all you do, right? You, you have to feed me, and 
love me and care for me and change my diapers and all of that, while the rest of you, brothers and sisters, you have to serve me to like, get all, to a certain age, right? And that's how babies think. So you see, babies don't have any problem. So come down to our university systems today, and then we just finished our exams yesterday, uh, Amadou Bali University students, and then look at it. Ask a student today to write the first question of the first paper they wrote during the exam. I bet you 99% of students can't write it down for you. Why? Because we are being taught to know and not taught to use. Why is it like that? Babies learn to use, okay? So babies don't learn anything they're not going to use. So if a baby is learning to walk, it wants to walk. If it's learning to talk, it wants to talk, right? But we learn to just know. So I was talking to a friend the other day, and then I was telling them, I said, the reason why I really don't follow what my lecturer says about life too much is that he is teaching me what he was taught, not what he knows. So I'll prefer, I'm, I'm reading mechanical engineering, right? So I'll prefer sitting down in front of a mechanical engineer who has gone on field. He has worked on projects, he's worked on the engines and all of that, and he is telling me how they work, right? So I'll tell you a little story on how, what inspired me to change my learning habits. So uh, we won an access team, we won the national competition last year, and we went to Silicon Valley. And during the Enactus World Cup in Silicon Valley, there was a session with Ford Motor Companies, a lot of companies actually. So I went to the session with Ford because I was mechanical engineering cars, you know, I was like, man, by the time I come back, my lecture will not know me. I will arrange all of them, I will sit them down. So I was thinking of going to, you know, because we've been taught combustion engines and all of that. Um, and stuff. So I was like, okay, I'm going to learn about how the engine works. If I'm going to learn from one of the best companies in the world, right? Because I will buy a car when I, when I have the money to do that. And then so we sat, and uh, so they came, two Indian guys. And the first shock I was, they were electrical. One was an electrical engineer, the other was a computer scientist. I was like, okay, so nobody's going to talk mechanical something today. I was like, well, I'm here, let me listen. And so they started talking, and I thought I was going to be hearing, so we're going to increase the, um, the mileage of the car by um, you know, adding more piston rings and everything. I was, like, I was you know, about to be blown away. But they started by saying, oh, so by 2022, Ford is going to release its first fleet of um, automated cars, and they're going to release it as taxis. So you could be in the US, and you don't need a car. You just call the car. Just sit in. There's no driver. You punch in where you're going to, and you move. And they were saying, oh, this is done by collecting data. They've mapped out the whole of California and all of that. Like, now nobody really needs a mechanic. They're robots, so you just need to learn how to control the robot. And I was like, what? <laughs> I was like, so are you telling me that I'll, I'll be jobless? No, that is the reality. <laughs> so, OK, so, so that is the reality, right? So at that moment, it dawned on me, and I said, and so, OK, it came for the time for question and answers. And then some people from Germany, you know, Germany is like one of the leading countries when it comes to car manufacturing. They have like the best cars in the world. If you want to drive, if you drive a Mercedes in Nigeria, you're like, he's got loads of money. You're my G, right? For young guys, you say, this guy is a correct G, right? If you drive a BMW, you know, you're like, eh, this guy is cool. I would like to have that one day. If you drive it to it, I'd be like, oh, he's a family man, right? <laughs> So, but you, you get what I'm saying, you get the concept. So, I was like, and they were asking questions about automation, how do the data works, blah, 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 how is the artificial intelligence and all of that. And all. The questions I had in mind were about piston ring and combustion engines. And I was like, okay. And I thought back to my, to my time there, and I was like, to be honest, personally, personally, 60% of the cars I saw in San Jose, in Silicon Valley, were electric cars. So mechanical engines are outdated. Everybody wants something simple, scalable, and sustainable. So they are going out. And we are here in Nigeria. Once you buy the latest Prado Jeep, when you own it, or when you buy the latest Tundra or something, you buy a Mustang, and you, it's rare. You're like, yes, the town will feel me now. And I was like, bro, you are outdated. 
very soon. So right here in Nigeria, we think what we have is the latest, right? But we don't know that. In the United States, for example, I was talking, um, an alumni came and he was telling me, and we're like, oh, wow, this guy has an E-class Benz. He's a rich person. I was like, nah. And I was like, oh, that if you're driving a Benz, a BMR, a BMW or something in the United States, um, they'll take maybe you're an executive person, you know. Uh, but then these are cars that anyone could afford, right? Like based on their system of payments, even a Chrysler, you could afford it, right? He said, if you want to know the real rich people, they are the ones driving the Teslas on the road. I was like, okay. So Tesla that we just thought, you know, is just one rich guy that wants to show the world how smart he is producing, you know, electric cars. I got to know that they are even more expensive, reputable, and futuristic to be in than your BMW, your Mercedes, and whatever car you have. And so I was thinking, I was like, why is there a difference between the way we learn as young people in Nigeria and the way they learn, because the difference is in how they speak. So when you're talking with you know, someone from Canada or Germany or somewhere, where their mind goes to, you are looking at them like you have not thought of that yet. So they think like babies, actually. So once you just bring an idea next and you say, oh, why can't we do this with this? Oh, let's do it now. There, is a, now there are apps that tackle depression, right? There are apps that you tell what's wrong with you, and it makes a prescription for you. There are countless mindless apps being produced all over the world. But in Nigeria, have you found out that the only app we like to use is WhatsApp, Instagram, and Twitter? Nobody uses Facebook anymore. Sorry about that. But then, what we young people like to use is WhatsApp, Instagram, and Twitter. So I was about to work with some young people here in, the, in, in school, and I said, OK, let's open a Slack uh, group and we communicate on the Slack group. I mean, us, I'm sure many of us here would know what a Slack group is, which means I'm right. Many of us do not know what a Slack group is because we do not want to go to the next curve of information. So if you are, as a professional anywhere in the world, when you're working in a, in a team or a group and you're going to be sharing files, documents, and all of that, most of the times, once you start, they just open a Slack group. You know, let's make it professional because, like, for professional guys, well, then, you get people to come into the Slack group, and then they're like, how do we use this thing? And you're like, how do you not know how to use this thing, right? So I was thinking, I said, well, I need to start changing my mentality, right? I need to start changing. I need to be smarter than other people. So why am I, how did I become smarter than other people? I, I believe that I'm smarter than all of you in this room. If you feel I'm joking, come and meet me after the meeting. Uh, you'll find out, OK? So how did I do this? So, I said, you know what? The way babies learn is by looking, reading, playing with anything they have. And I said, well, I'm going to play with everything that I have. And as I began that process, and sometimes I had to embark on some personal projects. And truth be told, some of those personal projects failed, right? And failure for us in Africa is more like a definition of your life. So for example, if you do not have a certificate from a university, your parents will think you are done for. This my child is not going anywhere in life. And you'll be like the black sheep of the what family. But then you look at the world today and you look at Mark Zuckerberg, you look how big guilt. Well, I'm not saying drop out of school, no. What I'm saying is that they were able to achieve some of the world's biggest feats. They built some of the world's biggest companies without a degree. Right, without a what degree. Bill Gates started building softwares at a point in time where all the technology we have now was not there. He started Microsoft at a point where the technologies was, were not there. Steve Jobs. Steve Jobs started Apple from a garage, right? And now today, if you own an iPhone, you're like a big boy or you're like a big girl. And so it defines who you are, which is a very wrong mentality that we have here in Nigeria. So the way we learn things is basically flawed. And so I was, I was, I was, I was saying, okay, I need to play. And I started to fail, right? So for me, at first, the failure wanted to seem like a definition of who I was. So if I try this and I failed, is that I'm no good. And then I hit myself hard and blame myself and I'm stuck there. Until I heard someone say, failure is an event. The same way success is an event. And Mark Zuckerberg said, he said, when many people ask him, how can they avoid mistake? He tells them, 
as you're young, make a lot of mistakes. Make mistakes, move on. Thomas Edison, he failed over a thousand times before he made a light bulb, right? Babies, babies basically fall over and over and over again before they finally can stand on their own and walk. They don't care where they are trying to start. It's whether if it's on the staircase, whether if it's on the room, on a wet floor, all they know is that I want to stand and walk, right? And Thomas Edison, he failed a thousand times before he could get the light bulb to work. Now, imagine someone knowing a thousand ways how something could not work and continue to do it. How many people here, how many young people have that drive? What we know is, oh, I'm the best in my class. I have a first class certificate. So every other person in this class is dumb. I'll be the best and the most successful in life. And so you go out, out of school, and then the labor market shocks you. And you find out that in life, those third class, second class lower students, right, those people that felt like they were dumb in society, they usually turned out to be the most successful. Should I tell you why? Because they try to follow the culture that was set to say, take what I know. If you take what I know, you will make it in life. Our parents will tell you, finish your secondary school, go to the university, get a certificate, a very good one, come out with first class, flying colors, fly everywhere, you will get a job. That is a practical lie that I've been told for the past decade, right? Or maybe for the past um, generation, right? So, but then the people who do not do well in school, they now find out one thing, that if I'm to succeed in life, I need to start learning like a child. So they always go back to their beginning and say, who am I? What do I know how to do best? How can I become good at this? And so you see them investing in themselves. So we are being taught so that when we're graduating, right, we'll be investing in the economy. So we're teaching you all these things so that you go into the labor market and you pour out all your expertise into somewhere, but you never receive anything. So the same person you are when you graduated is the same person you are when you're about to die on your sick bed. But the people that learn like a child, the people that go back to the beginning and begin to ask themselves, what am I doing wrong? How can I move from this place to another? The people that move like children, that fail and get up and fail and get up and keep on moving, those are the ones that are successful because they understand that in life you need a push and not a pull. Everything in society is pulling us. It's either you are on this side or you're on this side of this idea or you're on this side of the argument. What you need is a push. You need to go outside of the box. You need to think outside of the box. So I tell people, right, so it's not much about thinking outside of the box. That's what we're, we're always told. How about you see what can I do with the box, right? That is where we're leading to. So there's a popular saying that says, give a man a fish, you feed him for a day. Or teach a man how to fish, and you feed him for a lifetime. That's a lie. If the man does not commit to fishing, he will starve, even though he knows how to fish. So what I'm saying is, what you learn in school, how many of us go back and say, oh, I just learned about engines. Why don't I try to build one? Right? Because basically, car companies, the basic difference between them are their engines. So you say, why don't I learn to build one? Instead, what we say is, oh, they have taught me how to fish so they have fed me for a what lifetime. But we forget that the commitment to fishing is what provides sustenance. So I'm saying is, whatever we've learned in life, whatever we're going to continue learning, it doesn't matter how good you learned it. It doesn't matter how good the person that thought you is. What matters is that if you refuse to take action, you will never make impact. And then if you die and you don't make impact in this world, you practically come to waste 80 years. You've had to come to waste time. Do not waste time. Start looking at how babies learn. Make the failures. Let the failures be events in your life so you learn something and you move on. If you do that, you'll be the greatest person that ever lived on earth. Thank you for listening to my TED Talk.